Okay, so um, the second discussion is on uh, physical and health psychology. Now, um, this is actually the the chapter that I usually skip uh, whenever I I handle this subject, and this is because it's more for um, focus on health psychology, which is um, a uh as another branch or a new branch in the field of psychology so to speak but given the pandemic i think it was only fitting that we uh discuss this as well in order to help us understand uh what are the psychological implications um in conditions that uh usual conditions that we have or yung mga general medical conditions that people would have later on in their life or they have in their life. Okay, so this is the outline of the discussion. So, we start first with the psychological and social factors that influence health, the psychosocial effects of physical health, and the psychosocial treatment of physical disorders. So these are the focus questions. What is the difference between health psychology and behavioral medicine? What are the relationships between the immune system, stress, and physical health? How is stress related to AIDS, cancer, and health disease? Um, how do stress management and prevention uh, programs work? Okay. So, in, for some definitions, when we talk about behavioral medicine, this is the knowledge derived from behavioral sciences that is applied to prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of medical problems. On the other hand, uh, we have health psychology as a study of psychological factors that promote and maintain health as well as healthcare systems and health policy. So, I was only able to teach this uh, subject once. Um, Although dun sa mga uh, students ko in Australia, I, I'm handling this subject. Although na, there's not a lot who enroll in this subject, unlike other subjects that I handle sa mga online students ko. Alright, so with this being said, we also have psychological and social factors that influence health. So, these are the following. So, um, it's actually it's very important to understand these things because they contribute to the cause and maintenance of the disorders. So, first off, under your psychological factors that influence the biological processes, and then secondly, under biological uh, behavioral patterns that increase the disease risk. So, a good example of that would be this. Sexual behavior be, uh, affects the um, con the chance of contracting the virus. And then, stress increases the likelihood of uh, symptoms. So, this is a good example of how psychological factors and uh, behavioral patterns increase the risk of the disease. Okay. Now, let's look at the leading cause of death in the U.S. and 2010. So, kung makikita natin, di ba, yung mga disorder or yung mga sakit um, in the 1900s and in the uh, 2000s, so may 10-year gap na nga tayo dito, um, are the following. So, 1900s, they were, uh, ang cause of death talaga noon. Um, was pneumonia and influenza, tuberculosis as well. We also have diarrhea, enteritis, and ulcers, as well as heart disease and intra intracranial lesions of vascular origin, kidney disease, accidents, uh, tumors, uh, cancers, senility, diphtheria, and others. So, kung makikita natin in 2010, uh, the, some of these conditions have already been uh, extinct or na phase out na siya, so to speak. Um, but in this case, we have heart disease pa din as compared this one. Uh, also, cancer 
uh, also chronic lower respiratory disease it has it still has something to do with respiratory disease but not as um, specific as tuberculosis unlike before we also have stroke accidents is also a cause of um, uh, death and then uh, we also have alzheimer's diabetes nephritis uh, influenza and pneumonia as i uh, have seen we have seen before and suicide and others so kung makikita natin there are uh, conditions that have um that have changed so diabetes uh in 1900s we don't have that uh possibly because of the type of um the type of work that they do in the 1900s is more physical and laborious as compared ngayon. Aside from that, uh, they, they don't have a lot of processed foods during that time unlike uh, nowadays. No? <clears throat> so, in the U.S., the 50% uh, leading cause of death is linked to behavioral or lifestyle patterns. So, kung makikita nyo din, as the society had evolved, nagbago na rin yung cause of death. Dati kasi, ang cause of death um, in in the world is, it tends to be of um, yung mga diseases na talagang caused by the virus itself. It's not because um, na, contact, na contract mo yung virus na yun, uh, kaya ka nagkasakit but rather it's because of the lifestyle that you have that caused you to have that uh, disease or this um, condition so like for example smoking uh, poor eating habits as we have discussed in the previous chapter the eating disorders lack of exercise as well especially nung nagka pandemic as well kaya rin ano eh parang ngayon nakikita na na mas tumaas na yung nagkaroon na parang na-trigger yung diabetes um, nagkaroon ng heart disease kasi nga gawa nito mga ganito uh, insufficient uh, injury control so yan, hindi nag nagdalagay ng seat belts especially here in the Philippines I have a, I have a friend na uh, galing ng uh, ano ba to? Yeah, she, she was from South Korea when she was first here in the Philippines. Sabi niya, why, why aren't Filipinos using the, the seatbelt? In taxis, I don't see the use of seatbelts. Even the driver are not using seatbelts. So, sabi ko, ah, that's just how it is here in the Philippines. <laughs> so, tingnan niyo, correlation nun sa, uh, sa, accidents fatality na accidents natin on the road now moving on to the stress and stress response we all know that um stress increases the vulnerability for developing physical and mental health problems so we have already discussed that and we have been aware of that one na uh, the more stress we are the more it lowers our immune system uh, dahil nga hindi tayo nakatulog sa stress, di ba? Uh, dahil din hindi tayo nakatulog, uh, since we are sleep deprived, um, mas tumataas yung chances na magkasakit tayo dahil nga mababa ang ating immune system. So, um, when we are stressed, uh, as according to Hans Seile, we do uh, have this uh, response, the general adaptation syndrome, which is more or less the theory of the stress response where in the first phase we have the alarm response so we have the stressor and then uh dahil nga kumbaga nagulo yung ating homostasis or yung balance ng katawan natin so yun na detect ni body yung changes and we are uh, given this uh, warning na, oh, teka, may stressor ka. So, nakakaroon ng alarm response yung katawan natin. And then, with the second phase, um, with that particular alarm, tinatry na ni uh, body or ni system na mag-cope dun sa stressor na yun. Especially if the stressor is medyo na pro-prolong siya. Like, for example, deadlines. So, yun, may nakakaroon ng resistance in order to cope with that stress. 
And then aside from that, we have the phase 3, which is the exhaustion, wherein the body suffers from damage. So this is why um, yung mga high level of stress na, na work, hindi siya pwedeng sunod-sunod. Uh, kaya nga, for example, yung, um, ano ba to? Yung sa akin, pag may mga ganun na akong reports na sunod-sunod, I try to, to set it out in such a way na hindi, hindi ako ma-stress. Na kumbaga, may, may time ako para mag-cope yung body ko doon sa damage from the previous stressor. So, ganun yung ginagawa ko. <clears throat> So, what is the physiology of stress? So, as we learned in the uh, anxiety disorder, um, since uh, one of the stressor is the anxiety, uh, yeah, one of the factors that causes anxiety is the stress. Um, we know that the stress activates the HPA axis and then... <clears throat> From that one, um, the hypothalamus releases the CRF and stimulates the pituitary gland. Uh, from the pituitary gland, it activates the adrenal gland and secretes the stress hormone. So, usually, ayun nga, um, pag katapos ni stress or pag natapos na yung stress or natin, um, the hippocampus would usually turn off the stress response. However, pag uh, on, a con on a chronic state of stress tayo, um, minsan na the damage yung uh, regulating uh, response ni hippocampus for that one. So, parang kumbaga sa, sa on and off ng kuryente natin, kaka, kaka on and off, on and off niya, ayun, nasisira yung, uh, yung switch. So, pwedeng mangyari yun sa sa hippocampus natin. Now, what they have seen uh, in terms of what contributes to our stress response, um, sometimes it's the social status that uh, that that contributes to it. So, what they have seen in a research is that subordinate animals have usually a high level of stress which compromises the ability to respond to stress effectively over time. And this also leads to compromised immune system. On the other hand, ang nakita nila is that uh, if the, the animal is on the higher social status level, um, the predictability and of course, the position allows them to control the environment. So, mas nalilesen yung stress nila and then the, the stress response are not going to be activated on a frequent basis. So, yan. Katulad nito, um, <clears throat> Yan, diagram of the contributions to stress. So, the responses to uh, to threats and challenges. So, our, our feelings tend to range along a continuum of depression to anxiety here. Then, from, uh, from that, we also have to stress to excitement depending partly on our sense of control and our ability to cope. So, depending on how you look at it, diba? Um, and depending on how you see, how you can control or um, in terms of knowing your ability to cope to that stress or to the, uh, to the demand of the environment. So, yun. If you feel that you have more control or you have more ability to cope with it, it's either you're going to feel uh, stressed about it or you feel more excited about it. So, yeah. So, that's the continuum that we're seeing with regards to our um, mood as well. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, as we have established, the higher levels of stress decreases the immune system. Uh, kaya nga, kung titignan mo, uh, try to Try to observe that. 
kung kailan ka madalas sinisipon and then kung madalas ka sinisipon gaano kataas yung workload mo or gaano kataas yung demands sa iyo at that time um this is uh, this had been true with me nakikita ko yun most of the time pag marami akong ginagawa masipunin ako nung time na yun um so it's not just uh it's not just the the climate or the weather per se it's also with the the stressor that i'm experiencing at that time so aside from this one uh they have also seen that early life stress con contributes to inflammation in childhood so pag stressful yung uh in adulthood sorry so pag stressful yung child childhood mo it may lead to inflammation of some of your system particularly the the respiratory system and this this can also lead to and this can also continue in your adulthood we have this um study of psycho neuroimmunology which studies the psychological influences on the neurological component of the immune system or immune response <clears throat> okay so an example of study for this one rats were given sugar water together with a drug that suppresses immune system and then later on ang ginawa nila binigyan lang nila ng sugar water uh, and that sugar water alone was able to suppress the immune response kasi nga parang inassociate yung dalawa <clears throat> And then, parang na, na condition na yung brain ni nung rat na mag-respond in that particular manner. So, kaya na-suppress na rin yung uh, immune system nung rat despite that wala yung isa pang ingredient doon sa uh, nabinigay sa kanila. Okay. Now, what is the function of our immune system? The function of our immune system is really to identify and eliminate foreign materials or the antigens. So, um, if you are watching the cells at work, it will really give you pretty much uh, uh, an accurate presentation at, on what happens inside the body when foreign bodies uh, attack our system. So, this includes the white blood cells or the leukocytes, the, the B and T cells or the lymphocytes, and the micropages. So, again, I, I strongly recommend that you watch um, the cells at work in order to understand and enjoy uh, better how to uh, learning how the, the systems in our body work. Um, however, oh, an overreactive immune system may attack the body's own cells. So, may mga ganong condition wherein um, ang nakikita nila the, the blood cells are attacking their red blood cells itself kahit wala namang foreign objects yon. So, nagkakaroon ng problema doon. Um, and this is sometimes seen pag yun, mataas nga or prolonged na yung stress level ng isang tao. Now, this is a, a diagram presentation of how uh, the body works in terms of when it is a stress. So, what's our line of defense? So, yan. Pero mas maganda talaga yung ano, cells at work. <laughs> Tingnan nyo kung paano nyo yan ginagawa. I think what, just one episode will help you understand how it happens. Okay. <clears throat> So, in terms of our susceptibility to diseases, so uh, we can uh, look at this diagram to help us understand better ano yung susceptibility natin. So, like for example, if we have a certain uh, psychological characteristic or straight, uh, state like uh, neuroticism or type A personality, so ano yung... Um, Ano yung hormonal response usual ng mga type A personality? So, they are a constant state of um, anxiety. So, more or less, mabilis, ma-switch on yung HPA nila. So, more or less, mas madami silang 
uh, stress hormones floating around. With that, there is, of course, behavioral changes and the CNS in innervations and, of course, changes to the immune system and the disease susceptibility. Okay, let's look at the psychosocial effects on physical disorders like uh, AIDS. So, the AIDS is caused by HIV or the human uh, immuno... something something virus. I forgot that. But the, the HIV is a virus. And usually when you're infected with HIV, the symptoms may appear... Um, years after the infection it wouldn't really start right away um <clears throat> usually if it's you know parang it, it would start with minor symptoms like weight loss and uh, fever so kaya minsan na mi misdiagnose din siya kasi nga uh, minor symptoms pa lang yung usual na binibigay niya or ginagawa niya and usually it may take long uh as long as a decade to progress to a full-blown AIDS um, and makikita mo na siya um, yung appearance na ng full-blown uh, diseases or uh, serious illnesses hindi na siya yung weight loss and fever na lang as in nagkakaroon na siya ng sakit na ma mas grabe na hindi lang weight loss yung symptoms niya so in developing world or yung mga third world countries mostly uh, the people die within one year of uh, the detection of AIDS so ang um, best treatment nito so far I'm not sure kung meron ng better dito kasi uh, this was still in 2018 so um, parang or five years na since this was written so I'm not sure if there is already a, a better treatment for this one so ang ginagawa nilang treatment so far is the anti uh, retroviral therapy but this is not a cure so parang ang ginagawa niya lang is pinapalakas lang binubus niya lang ulit yung immune system mo kasi with AIDS pretty much the it will make your whole immune system down ganun siya katinde um and uh, what we're seeing here is the prevalence of uh AIDS So, kung makikita natin, mas tumataas siya ng tumataas as the year goes by. Ayan. Okay. And, these are the usual uh, costs uh, of or modes of transmission. So, it's usually mas mataas siya sa male-to-male -male sexual contact. I'm not saying that it's lesser if it's a uh, female to female or heterosexual contact meron din siyang ano dito ayan 32% sa straight um straight gender na sexual contact pero mas mataas pa rin sa male uh, contact and then there of course there is of course about 17% when you use injection drug use um, and then others um, or other ways of transmission like for example blood transfusion uh, about 1% so psychological factors and AIDS of course um, what causes the AIDS to progress uh, that fast yung exacerbation of pr progression uh, one of the main problems is, of course, high levels of stress. Now, again, with the high levels of stress, um, diba, na mention nga natin kanina na mas bumababa, lalo yung immune system natin when we're stressed out. So, and then AIDS itself is, um, na nakakompromise yung immune system nila. So, kumbaga, nagdo-double whammy sila. So, kaya yung iba, uh, ma mataas or mabilis yung pag-decline talaga ng health nila and then they tend to die 
at a young age or bago pa sila makakuha ng therapy or ng uh, medication, they die young kasi nga gawa nung kanilang uh, stress level is so high. Aside from that, they also have low social support, especially in the early stages or the, in the or early periods or in the early decades na talagang akala nila uh, sobrang nakakahawa ang AIDS na um, yung hindi pa siya masyado na, na, na explore or hindi pa siya masyado na pag-aaralan. Uh, there are people with AIDS na talagang ha- ayaw hawakan, ayaw parang ayaw nila ng, ng social interaction when they found out that the person has AIDS kasi nga ang akala ng ibang tao at that time uh, was it, it was highly contagious na parang just breathing the same air as there as them would uh, get would also cause you to contract AIDS <clears throat> which is not the case of course um, now with that one uh, dahil nga may ganito silang progression na nangyayari sa AIDS, the goal of the the attendee or the, the doctor is to reduce the stress levels of the person uh, and of course, to boost the immune system. So, with that uh, being the main goal of the treatment, of course, nag increase yung T helper cells and uh, nalolower antibodies and of course, na enhance then yung psychological ad- adjustment. So, with the um, randomized controlled trials examined the uh, efficacy of psychological interventions on neuroendocrine hormone regulation and immune uh, status in HIV positive individuals. So, ang nakita nila is that um, the psychological intervention does make uh, a difference um, in the survival rate of um, HIV positive uh, clients or individuals uh, with other interventions hindi nila masyadong makita yung efficacy per se okay and then what they also have seen in the study is that uh, treatments are uh, successful in improving psychological adjustments are more likely to have beneficial effects on the neuroendocrine regulation and the immune status. So, kaya nga ang ginagawa nila is to lower the stress rate first, um, address the low social support bago i-address yung uh, dun sa katawan talaga mismo. Kasi, um, medyo counterproductive kung ina-address mo ito ng ina-address pero constantly stress pa rin yung client and then wala siyang ma- ma-feel na uh, social support. <clears throat> then we also have cancer. We have a uh, psychology, uh, which is the study of psychological factors in cancer. Um, psychological and behavior contributions to the etiology and maintenance of cancer. We have uh, the following: um, perceived lack of control, pure coping responses or denial, stressful life events, and lifestyle risk behaviors. So, with cancer, this is also a very stressful uh, condition or a very stressful disease. Um, not only to the client themselves, but also to the caregivers or yung, uh, yung carers ng mga taong may cancer. Yung, like, for example, uh, family members, yung, yung, ano, yung magtate care sa kanila habang nag, uh, nag, nagte-therapy sila or nagte-treatment sila for cancer. Okay. <clears throat> so cancer mechanism um what are the psychological factors that uh, impact cancer risk by impacting impacting well, impacting uh functions such as immune function, viral activity, DNA repair processes, and uh, gene expression. So, the psychosocial treatments for cancer can help improve uh, the health habits, uh, treatment adherence, and doctrine function, stress response, and coping, and this may lead to better remission and uh, decrease mortality. Now, um, 
in my case I have uh, I have I have relatives who had cancer so I have one cousin uh, first degree cousin from the mother's side who had second stage breast cancer and uh, naalala ko nun talagang all out yung family support niya so aside from the nuclear family and extended family her uh, kasi parang Christian yung mga pinsan ko na yun the support from her church was also pretty good so given that uh, mabilis niyang na-accept yung fact na meron siyang uh, cancer and then mabilis din yung uh, parang hindi hindi siya nag eh parang uh, hindi, yeah, wala siyang ano uh, hindi siya nagkaroon ng relapse per se uh, and then in terms of dealing with the stress uh, bilis din siya nakapagdeal sa stress niya kasi nga strong yung social support niya uh, on the other hand, I had a recent case na yun yung naging problema. Um, the the client that I have has a sibling na 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 diagnosed with cancer. Kaso ang problema um, is that they don't have good social support within the family. Kasi like the 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 family member with uh, the one with cancer is not really um, feeling the social support from the rest of the family so this is also why in terms of the the habits that uh, she's doing ayun treatment adherence hindi niya ginagawa masyado more on cell phone on cell phone kagalaw lang siya pag may uh, ano siya uh, appointment with the doctor and that is only because the my client the one who came to me na na stress nga sa condition sa, sa bahay um, would remind her pa na oh may appointment ka sa doctor ganto 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 and everything na ano dapat asikasuhin yung paperwork ano binibigay lahat sa client ko. So, ang, ang nangyayari, yung client ko yung na-stress, at dahil nga parang pasaway nga yung kapatid niya, nagagalit din siya sa kapatid niya. So, the, the psychosocial treatment there, or the psychosocial factor there, um, it's not helping the, the person with cancer, uh, so to speak. Kasi nga, parang ang gulo ng setup nila. And then, uh, when I asked my client about this, na parang sabi ko, did you have some sort of psychoeducation uh, in order to help you cope better with uh, the situation? Kasi nga, uh, totoo naman na napaka-stressful pag may isang family member na may sakit, no? Uh, especially, yung gantong type pa ng sakit, hindi siya masaya. Very stressful yung ganto. Uh, Pero sabi niya, hindi daw. Kasi nga, uh, they are, they are, um, depending on the government, uh, government aid or assistance para makapag-treatment yung ate niya. Yung sa PCSO, yung mga ganun. So, wala silang parang psycho-education na anong, uh, paano, paano matutulungan yung ate niya na ma-accept yung reality na meron siyang cancer kasi nga ang sabi ni client sa akin is parang may may point pa rin na in denial pa rin yung kapatid niya na may cancer siya so again this type of situation well, uh, does not really help with the improvement of uh, the case okay now this is um Psychological effects of psychological intervention for breast cancer. So as we can see, ayan, if there is an uh, intervention only or uh, assessment only, pag pag red at uh, saka green, no? And then what is the uh, proportion of surviving? And um, so ito yung recurrence free survival. So nakikita natin if it's intervention mas mataas pero kung um uh ano ba to 
akong uh, more on assessment lang siya. The, the graph pretty much has a different story to tell. Ayan. So, pag may assessment and intervention, mas maganda yung proportion ng surviving uh, especially in the first few months here tira mo, hanggang 40 siya dito whereas if it's just intervention or um, assessment lang yan, ang bilis ng decline niya diba? so 40 months pa lang mababa na siya unlike for this one masusustain siya dito and hindi siya ganun kababa so we know the importance of intervention or having both intervention and assessment as well okay now for the cardiovascular problems so with this one includes the um, problems with the heart blood blood vessels and regulatory mechanisms um, <clears throat> Some problems might include the heart attack, uh, high blood pressure, stroke, as well as heightened response, uh, responsivity to acute mental stress, um, and then chronic stress and personality factors are also uh, deemed to be important uh, thing to look into when it comes to cardiovascular diseases. Now, a good example for this would be uh, hypertension or as we know the high blood pressure now when we have this condition we are at increased risk for heart disease and kidney diseases and this is because yeah um pretty much this condition taxes the blood the blood vessel so parang in a way it, we are overworking the but Okay, I'm really sorry for that. Um, so, this is why I don't also like working at home. So, uh, anyway, going back. So, the what's happening here is that the, the blood vessels are pretty much overworking. Uh, dahil nga, the amount of blood being pumped in their, in their way is not the usual or the normal amount. <clears throat> Okay, now for the prevalence, um, mas greater risk ang African Americans uh, as compared with the other races. So, what are the risk factors? Of course, uh, excessive sodium intake. So, yan, yung mga may ilig sa mga maalat na pagkain. Uh, I feel so attacked. And then, of course, sympathetic arousal. Uh, the stress level so especially if your work is a very stressful uh, type of work so mas mataas ang chances mo na mag-develop ka ng gantong condition uh, express anger yung magigalitin as well as hostility is also a risk factor for developing this kind of disorder or condition <coughs> Now, what are the causes for hypertension? So, psychological factors, of course, such as personality, coping style, and again, level of stress. We cannot emphasize this enough. Have been used to explain the differences uh, in blood pressure. Social support is also important contributor for cardiovascular diseases. Um, loneliness, depression, and feelings of uncontrollability are psychological factors that also contribute to Cardiovas cardiovascular conditions happiness and optimism are associated with cardiovascular health so um, the the more happiness that you feel and the more or higher level of optimism that you feel the more healthy you are in terms of your cardiovascular uh, aspects Okay, another condition is this one, CHD or the coronary heart disease wherein there are blockages of arteries that supplies blood to the heart muscle. So, um, psychological and 
behavior risk factors for this one, of course, anxiety, anxiety, uh, anxiety, stress, and level of anger, poor coping skills, and low social support. Okay, um, CHD is actually linked with the type A behavior pattern, yung neurotic uh, type of, of behavior, uh, wherein the person is very excessive in terms of their competition competitiveness and their drive uh, for success they are very also impatient and they have this accelerated speech wherein they, they tend to speak fast okay they is uh, they uh, this is also linked with chronic negative affect yung parang laging pessimistic um, laging uh, negastar, diba? Uh, low social economic status as well, and uh, stressful experiences. Now, this is a diagram that shows us the risk factors, the interactions of the risk factors for CHD. So, let's say, for example, you come from a uh, low social economic status. So, the access to resources is low. Position in the social hierarchy is also low. Um, so, given that uh, these things are low, the threat of uh, or actual loss or harm is high. And the potential for actual benefit or gain is low. Kasi nga, you don't have access to resources and nasa mababang uh, level ka ng social strata. And then, of course, this will lead to negative emotion and cognition. So, you will feel uh, pessimistic about your situation. Uh, and uh, with that pessimism, you would, uh, you would look at it as a hopeless situation. And then, of course, um, the, the probability that you would feel positive emotion and cognition is going to be low. And then, this would lead to... Um, ayan so kung may reverse capacity ka uh, you can see that there is tangible inter interpersonal or intrapersonal uh, ways to deal with it so that is reverse capacity ha? however if you don't have that yan this would lead you to the risk of atel atherosclerosis and CHD. Okay, we also have the condition of chronic pain. Now, the chronic pain, uh, yan, meron siyang constant pain na nararamdaman. It may be acute or chronic. Um, this may include behavior pains like limping, complaining, or avoiding certain activities. Um, and the experience is highly influenced by psychological factors. Um, <clears throat> now, the severity of the pain is not a good predictor of one's reaction to it. Remember that pain is uh, subjective. It's, um, uh, it's perception per se. It's not... Uh, Kung babalikan natin yung cognitive psych natin, pare-parehas lang yung threshold sa ating, um, ating uh, neurons to, to say that there is pain. Ang pinagkaiba lang is the frequency of the pain uh, or not frequency of the pain per se. The frequency of the, um, the stimulation of the neurons. So, dun na nagkakaiba. Pero, in terms of the level of um, stimulation, isang level lang siya na stimulate. So, kaya nga iba-iba yung ating, ano, uh, how do you call this? Threshold for pain. Okay. Now, the psychological factors, ayan, it may be worsened because of the low perceived control. Uh, like, for example, sabi niya, hindi ko kaya, masakit talaga, masakit talaga. Uh, where, um, like, I'm not sure if you have seen yung, ano, yung sa mga videos sa uh, Facebook, 
yung tinatry stimulate or simulate ng mga lalaki so naglalagay sila ng parang pang ano <clears throat> pang pang mimic yung yung uh, hindi ko alam po anong tawag dun eh uh, pero minimimic niya yung uh, men- menstrual cramps so yun, pag nilagay sa lalaki syempre they don't they never had uh, menstruation uh, so they don't know what it's like to have menstrual cramps um, kahit na level 3 pa lang yung level nung machine na yun, they are they they act as if like it's at level 10 the highest level kasi nga at the low perceived control over the pain that they are feeling ayan it, it makes it worse of course negative emotion is also another factor so that one causes um since they the the pain is accompanied by this negative emotion wherein they feel that they don't really have a control over that and that this is going to be a continuing thing in their life over and over again so yeah kaya siya continue so like for example in pessimism so yeah it can be a cause for uh the pain to worsen and then of course poor poor so uh coping skills are also uh, a factor for example, they feel that they don't really have a control over the pain that they are uh, feeling. They don't uh, see anything that will resolve the pain. So that that shows for coping skills. Also, we have low social support. So when we don't have people around us to help us to deal with the pain, that will be also a factor um, that can worsen the pain that is felt. Now, um, also, the pain behaviors may be increased by compensation. So, this is why, um, like, for example, in your case, diba, pag sabi niya, mama, hindi po ako papasok kasi po may ganto-ganto ako. So, we have to have, um, we have to have documentation that you really had that happen to you. Kasi, if we readily agree to that, na parang, o oh, sige, umabsent ka kasi ganto-ganto kasi masakit yung katawan mo, katawan mo naman yan, ba? Parang ini-enable kasi namin yung ganun na ginagawa niya. So, basically, we are compensating it by giving you that uh, time off na pwede kang kumuha ng exam. So, pretty much, yun. Yun ang nangyayari. So, mataas din yung chances na magmamalinger ka later on. So, same with this one. And the social reinforcement the more that they gain sympathy, the more that uh, tumataas yung chances na gagawin nila ulit yun. Or, uh, mas, um, ayun, hindi na nila i-cope yung pain per se, or hindi na sila mag- maglulok for solution for the pain itself. Dahil nga, they are gaining sympathy, or they are uh, having something out of it. <clears throat> Okay, now, as according to uh, these theories, these are some of the psychological mechanisms as to why we feel uh, pain. So, for the gate control theory, ayan, neurological processes affect the degree to which pain is detected. So, like, for example, when we are very anxious, um, mas mabilis tayong, uh, or mas mabilis daw, ma, ma- Mapil yung pain when we are uh, on the state of anxiety and uh, fear. <clears throat> we also have the endogenous opioids, which are pain inhibiting natural chemicals that may be increased by exercise. So, when we um, have exercises and where we do exercises, um, we have this one opioids wherein we don't really feel the pain that much kasi nga nag uh, para na increase siya from the activity that we're doing that, this this is why when we're exercising then hindi natin masyado ramdam yung sakit ng katawan uh, re- later na lang natin siya mararamdaman after the exercise itself 
And then uh, for females, they have additional pain regulation mechanism that may have been evolved to facilitate childbirth. So this is also why mas mataas nga daw yung uh, pain tolerance ng mga babae kaysa sa lalaki because of this uh, evolution, uh, evolutional uh, mechanism that had uh, transpired. Okay, so pretty much this shows us what happens um, in uh, a, a person with chronic pain. <clears throat> okay, I'm not discussing it anymore for the interest of time. Okay, so next up we have the um, chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, this is uh, the lack of energy and uh, mark fatigue that does not improve even with adequate amounts of sleep and then aside from that uh, the person might have had uh, aches and pains and uh, sometimes um, low fever or uh, what we call in Filipino CNAT <clears throat> now this particular condition is seen to be more common in ma uh, females than with males and um, the incidence is increasing in western countries now the <clears throat> the severity of this condition is um is it's so severe that it's sometimes difficult for the person to do work now these are some of the other symptoms of the cfs um we have the subjective memory impairment uh, sore throat tender lymph nodes muscle pain joint pain headaches and refreshing sleep malice um lasting for more than 24 hours so this is yung parang medyo uh, yung medyo walang gana uh, or in other words yung sabi ko nga batang increment <laughs> okay and um the cause of this actually is largely unknown uh, some have thought it might be viral or biological but the the main uh, culprit is not um, is not really found yet <clears throat> however there are some who says that this might be a stress response um, and not really viral or biological infection per se now with the treatment um, the medications have been found to be um, not that quite effective um, kasi nga Diba? Parang, bakit ka magagamot eh hindi mo nga alam kung saan siya galing. Uh, however, with CBT, they have seen that uh, it helps in terms of um, increasing activity and regulating stress, uh, arrest, sorry, as well as stress reduction. It helps in those particular aspects. Again, this is a diagram that shows us how these uh, things happen. So, I'm not going to... Uh, explain it further you can uh, see the book to try and understand it by yourself um we have a uh, time to catch up on so so that i'm skipping this one <clears throat> okay now what are or uh, what is a psychological treatment for this uh, physical disorder so one of those is biofeedback now, biofeedback is done when we uh, monitor, we take, um, we take notice of what's happening inside our body. So, by monitoring it, observing it, we can also make our responses or um, uh, try to control the bodily responses somehow. And this is not limited to the following, the, the heart rate, blood pressure, muscle uh, muscle tension and the uh, EEG rhythms and by doing so we are able to have um, an increased sense of control kasi nga uh, you know your heart rate you know your blood pressure so dahil nakikita mo na uh, uh, it's within normal range it's within normal limit so uh, maybe I should continue doing what I'm doing so nagkakaroon ka ng sense of control by knowing uh, or monitoring these things in terms of its efficacy, ayan, it improves the patient's ability to control a, a bodily process such as the severity of the headache. So, um, like for example, with my mom, uh, when she was uh, already approaching her menopausal stage, ayan, talagang 
lagi siyang may sakit, lagi siyang may ano, parang, uh, and then I remember one of her older sisters telling her, iniinda mo kasi lagi yung sakit, parang, parang binibaby mo yung sakit, in other words. So, after that, she decided to take note of the things that she's feeling on a day-to-day basis. And then, dahil nga nakikita niya nga yung pattern ng uh, bodily responses niya, mas naaagapan niya na ano yung dapat niyang gawin, ano yung hindi dapat niyang gawin uh, in, in doing that kind of approach. Now, aside from that, we also have relaxation and meditation as techniques uh, to help with the physical disorders, um, uh, particularly the progressive muscle res- relaxation. Um, and then we also have the transcendental meditation which focuses on a repeated mantra Um, this one it would be helpful if you have someone to guide you to do this Uh, kasi pag um, ikaw lang or on your own lang uh, sometimes you may be at a loss of what to do or if you're really doing something uh, right so parang baka imbis na makatulong makadagdag pa ng stress dahil nga dun sa uh, feeling of uh, confusion doon sa ginagawa mo and then with that said there is also an increased sense of control and mastery when you do this as well and uh, what they have found out is by doing this um, nag improve yung headache hypertension acute at saka yung chronic pain nung isang tao <clears throat> Okay. Now, this is a good example of a stress and pain reduction program. So, ito yung ginagawa niya. Monitor and identify stressful events. So, ano yung times na, na stress siya? Ano yung, paano yung intensity ng stress niya? Ano yung triggers niya? So, susulat niya yon. Monitor somatic symptoms. Ano yung nararamdaman niya sa katawan niya? And then, uh, what do they do to cope? So, more or less, Uh, tinuturoan din sila ng muscle relaxation techniques. And then, with cognitive therapy, ayan, kung anong kailangan i-reframe sa mindset nila, that would be very helpful as well. Um, increasing coping uh, strategies, ayan, uh, time management, assertiveness training, especially for those na may uh, problems sa, uh, uh, ano ba to? sa heart nila yung mga hindi masyado nag-express ng anger na na nag accumulate din kasi yun eh so it can lead to cardiovascular diseases and then um yeah yeah this is a good example of a stress monitoring uh sheet yan, ano yung date, uh, ano yung time niya nag-start siya, anong time na nag-end yung uh, situation niya. And then, meron siyang rating scale using this scale. Yan. Ano yung triggers niya? What triggered the stress to happen? And then, ano yung naramdaman niya? Somatic symptoms. And then, ano yung thoughts na nagro-run sa utak niya during that time that it was happening. Okay. The next up is the drug and stress reduction program. So, medications may decrease the efficacy of a comprehensive program. So, yun, minsan nagkakaroon kasi ng rebound headaches, even when not on medication for headaches. Um, also, with this type of um, intervention, a high relapse is seen when uh, the medication is stopped. And then another thing about this one is that uh, the tendency to develop tolerance is also higher. Okay, uh, sometimes, uh, although it's not really advisable uh, most of the time, denying the situation might be also a, a way to cope. So, yeah, in some circumstances, denial about the seriousness of a physical condition can be helpful. So, let me give you an example. Um, a good example would be for uh, cancer patients. Diba? Um, kasi may mga ibang, may mga ibang, uh, may mga ibang tao kasi na ang thinking kagad is, ah, cancer, mamamatay na ako. So, kasi nga, mataas talaga mortality with cancer. Hindi naman natin madedenay yan. However, if the the stage of cancer is only uh, during the first stage or second stage, so, na, na, nagkaroon na early detection, that would be helpful na parang, 
um, hindi mo na i-deny na may cancer ka, but rather, i-deny mo yung severity in terms of the mortality of the condition. So, hopefully, you get what I'm saying. Kasi, um, by doing so, mas, mas nakiging, mas mabilis yung pagiging, ano nila, uh, responsive sa treatment. Uh, although, hindi naman dapat na all throughout the the course of their dis- disease, they will be denying the whole existence of the disease. Kasi later, ayan, it will be more helpful to face the situation and process the emotions fully about their condition. Okay. Now, how do we modify behavior to promote um, health? So, first up with uh, injury prevention, so accidents are seen to be one of the leading causes of death from ages 1 to 45. So, although there are uh, repeated warnings of what we should do and what we should not do, hindi pa rin siya enough. Um, and then, what we really need is programmatic uh, programmatic efforts. Like, for example, uh, this is why we have fire drills, we have... Um, uh, <clears throat> earthquake drills, diba? Kasi nga, by doing that, uh, we are um, increasing the chances of survival for the people. However, um, unfortunately, here in the Philippines, hindi tayo sing serious, unlike with other countries, when it comes to this training. <clears throat> like, for example, diba? Uh, nakikita natin yung um, yung earthquake drill minsan ginagawa yung means ng mga estudyante to uh, to go to the mall kasi nga ang tagal bago mag reconvene back doon sa uh, ano ba to? so yeah mag reconvene ang tagal din ng ano na minsan kasi nga hindi mabilis ang responses ng ginagawa ng mga nagsisimulate ng ganun so, I think we still lack in that particular uh, training. Uh, there's still a lot to be improved. Unlike, unlike for Japan, diba? Japan, they have, um, they have a very good system when it comes to earthquake uh, drills, uh, fire drills, etc., etc. And also, yung sa atin, parang hindi siya, hindi siya palagi ang nangyayari. Unlike with other other um, countries na parang may monthly earthquake drill sila tapos may fire fire drill din sila. So, kumbaga yung mga ganong uh, training para ma-program sila on what to do and what not to do, uh, ma-i-instill. So, kumbaga sa, sa sports, nakakaroon sila ng muscle memory on what to do in those situations. Um, okay. So, next, uh, for AIDS naman, so of course AIDS prevention, um, this is highly a preventable uh, condition or disease um, by just changing our behavior. So una-una of course yung safe sex practices. With safe sex practices, the use of condoms, of course, um, yung um, not just loyalty in terms of emotions, but loyalty or faithfulness in sexual partners. And also, yung openness na din sa sexual educations, like for example, uh, getting yourself checked. Um, in, in other countries, they do that. They do the the whole uh, shebang, sabi nga nila. Bago magpakasal, ginagawa yan na mag-asawa sa ibang country, like... Mm. Uh, again, another great example is Japan. They have a thorough medical examination from um, the genetics para alam nila ano yung kailangan nung uh, mag-asawa para hindi matrigger yung recessive gene for a certain condition. Uh, they also have psychological um, evaluation bago sila magpakasal. Uh, again, it's very thorough. And then, um, in other countries, before moving in together, bago sila mag live in, they would, <clears throat> um, they would have uh, medical checkups para mapakita na sa partner nila that they are clean. Kasi, um, syempre, it's part of the trust in the relationship. It's part of gaining and, uh, 
uh, giving your trust to the other person. It's not enough na sinabi niya na hindi, ikaw lang talaga sa buhay ko. Uh, that, that would not be, ano, that would not be uh, ideal. So, <clears throat> with those things, um, pag ginagawa natin yun, definitely, it's not saying that you don't trust them, but uh, better safe than sorry, sabi niya. And then, uh, of course, the use of sanitary, uh, sanitary use of needles. Um, if it's for, ano lang, for, uh, ano ba to? Hmm... Yung proper disposal din kasi, parang yung mga iba kasi, they, they don't know how to do that. Um, especially yung mga, yung iba nagtitake ng uh, dugo for, like for example, yung sa diabetes. Um, kasi may needles din yun eh. So, remember that it can be a cause, although mababala naman yung chances, but still, uh, prevention is better than cure. Um, and then, of course, having regular checkups would be a good thing to do. Um, and then, uh, having strong peer support programs is also a good way to uh, prevent uh, AIDS from happening. Um, this is because the, the peers that you have, especially if all of your peers are into uh, the practice of safe sex, the tendency of you doing... Um, unsafe sex or engaging in unsafe sex is going to be very uh, low as well because you learn from your uh, peer now for uh, smoking um, there are countries that had banned uh, smoking altogether kaya yung iba parang ano they <laughs> They would, I know, they would, uh, parang tinatakas nila yung smoke nila. Uh, in other countries, like for example in Singapore, although they know that they cannot ban it totally, um, what they do is mas mataas yung te- yung tax ng ano ng smoke kaysa sa ibang commodities. Um, and then what they do as well with education, they capitalize on family relationship. Uh, like for example, they teach the children first of the uh, of the impact of smoking to the health, and then of course the children would in turn pag um, pag umuwi na sa bahay, ikukwento sa bahay kung ano natutunan nila. So parang they they use the children as instrument to make the propaganda more effective in terms of smoking, naman. And then, they also distribute anti-smoking literature. Um, this is quite not that effective here. In the Philippines, there are still people who are smoking. Uh, kahit na may nakalagay na no smoking, nakikita mo mis- mismo yung driver ng jeep yung nag-smoke. Um, kagandahan na ngayon, di ba, nung nag-pandemic, medyo nawala siya. Uh, dahil hindi ka pwedeng hindi mag-mask sa labas. Um, Kaya, kaso ngayon, dahil medyo um, voluntary na lang ang mass mandate, yan, nakikita na naman natin yung mga uh, nag-smoke sa labas. Okay, and then they also target at risk population um, in order to help promote uh, good health. Okay, now there is a study that... Uh, focuses on health the, the Stanford 3 community study um okay sana siya if the if the society itself is uh, really on the promotion of good health um now the goal of this study is to reduce the risk factors for CHD or the heart disease um, well, they conducted it uh, three times on similar communities and each community got either no intervention, media blitz, media blitz plus face-to-face intervention. So, ang um, nakita nila from the study is that the highest benefits um, is from the media blitz plus live intervention from this particular study. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen if this study is conducted here in the Philippines. So, hopefully, magawa rin siya. 
um, especially since parang we're not far off into adapting the lifestyle in US no so medyo hinhabol natin yung lifestyle nila and it can be a good thing but also there are um, a downside of it okay we're on to the last slide guys don't worry <laughs> So, to summarize it all, uh, the risk of physical illnesses is related to long-standing patterns of behavior and lifestyle factors. So, yun nga, if uh, you're more prone to reacting aggressively to things, you tend to be um, someone who's, uh, kumbaga, hindi ka, your, your, your sleeping habits are not uh, good your sleep hygiene is not good so that's lifestyle you don't exercise so the tendency for you or you have a high risk for developing physical illnesses as compared to other people who have um, who have better lifestyle uh, choices than you and then in terms of psychosocial treatment um, <clears throat> they try to uh, or they help to prevent and treat physical disorders but in not in a way na yun, bibigyan sila ng gamot or bibigyan sila ng um, surgery per se but rather it tries to address first the things around the person that might compromise the treatment uh, from being effective and then uh, it's also comprehensive and targets the individual or community programs uh, most of the time okay so that's it for this chapter i hope you have learned a lot and we'll move on to the post test of course and then later on the uh, chapter 10.